Welcome to another Madera South Library tutorial video. I'm Jordan Maddox, the teacher librarian here at Madera South, and today we're going to be doing a research tutorial on how to use Google News and Google Scholar, two important databases that students can use in classes to help them conduct research. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to be looking at both Google News and Google Scholar. Both of these are invaluable resources to conducting research. Let's start with Google News. So Google News is not actually a news site like a newspaper, but really what it is is a collection of all different newspapers, local TV stations, news websites, magazines that you can access from the internet. And what it does is it puts them all in one place so you can search. Now a lot of your research topics might be about things like uh, different controversial topics, and what you can do is you can actually go to this toolbar up here and search for individual topics. Now there's some ways to narrow searches. So you can narrow your searches by writing an exact phrase. Maybe you want to focus on something someone said. Um, and so you want to look up the history of that phrase. Or you can look for articles that have the words in it. So if the word, you know, uh, Ukraine is in it, it might pull up all the articles that have Ukraine. You can also exclude words. So you can put Ukraine and then exclude the words Russia. So you won't get any articles that have Russia, but they have the word Ukraine in it. Okay? Now you can also access uh, or limit when the article is posted. So if you're looking for recent articles, you can just put in the past week. Okay? But if you want to see what's happened over the past year, you can put that in any time beyond that. You would just click any time. But we won't do that for now. What we're going to do for now is just look up a simple topic. Uh, we're going to look up climate change. So you might have this come up as your topic. Now, you saw when I looked at, when I uh, searched it right here, it came up as a topic. And if you do that, uh, basically what it is is a way that they put together series of articles along a topic or theme to help it um, help you organize uh, your articles a little bit better. But if you just want to see what pops up when you type in climate change, don't click topic like either of these, just hit enter and then you'll get a series of articles. Now, the series of articles, uh, some of them come from news websites like Fox News, some of them come from traditional newspapers like the Washington Post, some of them come from websites like CNET, and as you scroll down, you're gonna see lots and lots of different websites. All right, so we've got a bunch of different articles and we can choose and look through these in different ways, uh, but what I would encourage you to do is focus on things that describe events. Um, some articles are going to be more opinion-based. We call those op-eds, which are opinion editorials where people are sharing their points of view. Um, but really what we want to focus on is uh, descriptions of events. So if you look down here, it says three solutions that could turn the tide on, climate, on the climate crisis. This is going to be someone's opinion or point of view. Um, so this is more of an opinion-based article. Now if we go back here, um, we can find some stuff more about climate change as a description of events. Okay, and now some of these are going to involve paywalls, which means that you'll need an email address or an account in order to access them. Those you won't be able to use unless you have an account. So I encourage you to look for ones that are descriptions of events, so like news stories, as opposed to persuasive articles trying to argue a point of view. Okay, now this is one way to search for sources for your research. The other way is Google Scholar. Google Scholar is focused around academic research and articles. So you'll get articles, you'll get links to Google Books that are written by scholars or university professors, researchers. Um, but let's do the same thing here. Let's type in climate change and see what we get. Okay, so this is going to give you a lot more heavy academic research and less of news articles descriptions of events. So you can see the first one if we start from the top. Uh, this is a link to Google Books. Google Books is a way to access books online. Now, a lot of these books you can only see a portion of the pages, so you might be able to see some information about climate change here, but you won't get access to the full book. You'll have to find that book either through the library or through different places online. Now, some of these will be something like this. This is essentially a description of 
the uh, summary that was made for policymakers, meaning legislatures, about climate change. So this is their description of what they assessed to be the issues involved with climate change. So it would have an introduction. So this is something that was made for governments. Okay, the next one, and if you see it on the right hand, the left hand side here, if you see a PDF, that means you can access the full article. This is um, essentially an academic research article. And you can always tell if it's an academic article because it usually has an abstract at the top. An abstract is just a fancy way of saying a summary of the article. When you're looking at academic research, one of the first things that you should do is start with the abstract. The abstract is going to tell you whether the article is relevant to your research interests, meaning it's going to tell you whether the article is about the topic you want to research or not. So if you read this abstract and you get to the end and you go, that's not really what I'm researching, then don't read the rest of the article. That's why they created abstracts. Because if we all had to read every academic article about everything we wanted to research, we would run out of time because there's too many of them and they're too long and too complicated and too hard to understand. So always start with the abstract. So you can keep scrolling through here. You'll see more books, more articles. Some of them don't have links on the side. Um, but will show up as PDF. So this right here is uh, essentially a report of mitigation efforts in uh, trying to mitigate climate change. Uh, you have another academic article right here. Again, how do we know it's an academic article? Well, we see the university professors that wrote it. We see the abstract here at the top. Usually that's an indicator. Um, and this is uh, another academic article we could use. Now, a lot of the articles will have PDFs on the right-hand side that you can access. You can see that most of them have links to a PDF that you can click on and access. Now, on the left-hand side here, you can uh, update the range of time. So if you want only recent articles about climate change, you can click since 2019. You can also have them sort by date. So it'll bring up only the most recent ones, okay? Um, so as opposed to sorting by relevance, so meaning the ones that say climate change the most will pop up towards the top, but if you sort by date, it won't factor that in. It'll just pick which ones said climate change and were posted the most recent. Um, and that's the basics. So Google Scholar allows you to access a lot of great academic research, but I would encourage you to read the abstract first and think carefully about it because a lot of the research is complicated and difficult to read. Um, and starting with the abstracts is the best way to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how to use Google News and Google Scholar to conduct research. We'll see you in the next video.